Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the most Terran player out there. In the red, it's Micro Jackson. Be up. Up against the player who represents the rest of us. The People's Terran. In the blue, we have Kier. The top two non-Maru Terrans in Korea. Two players who truly embody the phrase. It's not about who wins. It's about who's left. And if you're still left around, it'd be awesome if you could like. And if you haven't made it there yet, subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we? It was, it was a little smooth. I bet. One thousand, one thousand, three hundred, and forty-three likes on this video on this cast. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Yes, Terran versus Terran, a mirror matchup. And just know, it, it has to reach a standard higher than even your average game of the year of the day to show a mirror matchup uh, here for the people. And simply, they're not as popular. You don't have as much diversity there. But sometimes, the all-Terran matchup, which is the most entertaining at the very lowest and the very highest levels, which is also where it's most common. Whether it's Bronze League Heroes or Beyond League Heroes, I expect these two to put on quite a show. Because I did spoil myself by looking at the file size of the games. Which is as far as I'm willing to go. But when a game has this much file size going for it. When it's almost measured in the megabytes as opposed to the kilobytes. Which is a lot. The average game is like 100 to 200. So, um, Well, you know you're in for something. And I have my suspicions. With Beyond, the Marine aficionado. He shapes those Marines into whatever tool he needs. A crowbar, a shovel... I guess they already have guns, which solves a lot of problems as well. Cure also, though, ready to deal with a double drop to start things off. Beyond, of course, going for the stim. He actually dropped before stim was finished, which means these Marines not able to take quite as much advantage of the situation. Cure had a defensive drop loaded up, ready to box out. And Beyond is rebuffed on his early attempts to drop the base, but I'm sure after... Uh, maybe a rap verse or a uh, fancy chorus where you might try to drop it again. Now, Cure with three command centers, more workers, and he's got his upgrades a little quicker. So, in terms of infrastructure and just uh, economy, Cure has the edge. But Beyond, always dangerous with the Marines. And, well, actually, we probably won't see too many Marauders if neither player goes back. Very simply, while Marauders are good against Siege Tanks, Siege Tanks are better against Marauders. Also, they cost more supply, more gas. It's just more efficient to have mass Marines, if you're willing to micro them. Which, both these players very much uh, ready to do so. Does that actually stop the Reapers from getting up there? It looks kind of odd, but I'm pretty sure it does. Be unthinking about it. This, <laughs> the Siege Tank, he's just taking his time, setting up a tank to deal with it. Tanks have enough rough go of it at the watchtower as well beyond picks up can't pick up the tanks in there too oh wait <laughs> sorry my bad beyond picks up and i wonder where he's going i don't he's he's heading for the main like, well two medivacs didn't do it cure now has oh that scv is very important he spots the medivacs with just a split second to spare but that's not going to stop him from dropping out there are multiple interference matrix ready ravens. Can he get in position to deal with it though? A single tank for Cure will help to deal with some of the Marines, but still not nearly enough in position to deal with this much stim. He's looking for interference matrix, but Beyond is able to pick up and extract these units moments before the ravens are able to close in and Cure gets into position. Beyond doubles back for the right flank. One one upgrades across the board, now completed. And of course, he's, he's waiting for another opportunity. Sends back the most badly bruised medevac. And another wave is headed across. But Cure? Well, yeah, Cure still with... I take it back. Where does where, does Cure have an advantage? In Terran versus Terran, sometimes being hyper-aggressive, as long as you can keep your units alive, uh, gives you that sort of advantage. But as I say, it Beyond flies directly into a missile turret cyclone combo. And is knocked out of the sky with one of those medifacts. But the Reaper Hellion finds its way in to actually kill some SCVs. 
It wasn't able to find anything for eight and a half minutes, but here we are. And now drops out into the main, but siege tank range, interference matrix at the watchtower. Cure jumps the main army and now is able to take a decisive victory. Beyond knocked down 15 supply, a single siege tank sieges up into the main, which is a little sad to be honest. And the rest of the army is cleaned up. We'll see if the medevacs make it out. Beyond realizes they were just wandering away and puts a little bit more pep in their uh, metaphorical step. Cure! Cure has combat shield. All right, for a second. Well, Cure off to an early lead in terms of supply and more focused on maintaining a strong army than outmaneuvering one. But Beyond splits, he stims, and he takes a good trade but doesn't quite skirt out of range of the siege tanks in time and eats another volley. There's still those two medevacs out in the corner heading back. Beyond has taken a fourth base on location. Cure, a bit more conservative. What? There's an SCV. Hey, sir. Do you know who you're working for? Do you know what he's done? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get paid, man. All right. Can you, can you, you can leave. I'm not, what? Oh, <laughs> not the command center. Anyways, well, don't say I didn't try to warn you. The command center itself being stutter stepped and he's got it. Guns it down from the low ground and now beyond out of fourth base because of his slight greed has Vikings to try to zone out the Ravens. But losing that fourth base puts me on in a severe deficit to start things off. Uh, nine SCVs went with it. Make that ten. The Cyclone's still racking them up. <clears throat> Beyond keeping up on the upgrades, but starting to get boxed into a corner. As Cure doing a good job of controlling the map. He's deflected Beyond's dangerous drops and his uh, more decisive attacks. And instead, Cure has taken a strong position out on the field and economically. How many tanks? Cure has nine. Beyond has four. Two Ravens to none. It's four Vikings to uh, zero for Cure. There's now eight barracks for Beyond. Cure now finishing barracks six through eight as well. He's got 35 SCVs at this base, soon to be transferring over to the four. As despite the aggression neither player really suffering such critical damage that will force them to go all in the marines dueling it out who got the first shot i'm not sure uh that was quite a fair fight not that we're looking for one beyond moves into position to defend and begun the scan wars have censored towers are covering most of the approach up to the both third and fourth bases beyond will expand on the low ground again Unwilling to learn the lesson, but down go the Ravens, and now Beyond has an army swinging in from the north. Comes through the smoke. Vikings knocking out the Medivacs. Cure moves in to counterflank, but the tanks are already dead, and Beyond grabs the supply lead. Oh, Cure gets outmaneuvered just slightly, and Beyond is able to take a much needed victory that will secure his fourth base and grab back a whole lot of the map control. Six to eight tanks in favor of Micro Jackson now. Cure lost his main lead, which was his tech and his army composition. And now Bion is headed across the map with so many marines and tanks. The rally point, a single tank. Now that's awkward. I don't... <laughs> they can't see each other. Because neither of them can control the watchtower. <laughs> I don't... I, um, I think Kira figured it out first, but doesn't matter. He's too busy worrying about the Watchtower Beyond. We'll jump the army on the field. Absolutely slaughtering it. Oh, my God. Whoever scans first is going to win this. Kira still... Um, no, that's not the problem. Oh! <laughs> wow. Beyond gets it first. The Marines will take revenge, and now we'll fight in the most disgusting choke point on the map. The Marines are coming through. Anyone caught at the Watchtower will not survive this exchange. Cure's tanks pounding the point home. Cure has plus, or, or Beyond's tanks in this case. Cure has plus two mech weapons working on plus three. Beyond just started plus two. 
Cure already at high sec auto tracking and building armor queued up, whereas Beyond is all about the aggression. He's dipped back in supply, and this fight is not going well for him, but the Marines are splattered across the field. As Cure stays a little too long, and the tank volleys continue to rain the point home. Beyond the fight over the watchtower. Will continue. Any Marines caught in the crossfire? Very unlucky. About a 15 Marines at a time for Beyond. More tanks. And now Beyond controls the watchtower with a tank. Which gives him effectively a free scan in that area. And now Cure has to find another angle. The Vikings have done a great job of zoning out the medevacs and keeping the uh, starport unit countdown. Ah, the tanks continue. Exacting a demanding price on any Marines that stray near enough. Gets a medevac. Two more tanks are sieging. Cure stims forward. Trying to avoid the tanks in the center of the map. They're somewhat exposed to a potential drop on top. Will Cure just go for the planetary? It doesn't have building armor. Cure not going to make the mistake. But this is the opportunity to drop and break those tanks at the watchtower right here, right now. And Cure realizes before Beyond can move into position to deal with it, splits off. They'll expect some of us in the wreckage, brothers. But for a great cause, splits the Marines, does a pretty good job of it, and now should be able to retake this position. But cost Cure a few extra tanks. Wasn't the cleanest uh, maneuver there, but here come more Marines. There's only a couple tanks for Beyond, and the Marines are routed. Sprinting back towards the fourth. There's still a bunch of rocks in the way. Vikings knock out a medevac. But Kier now has the army in position on the field. Beyond has the supply, but he can't bring it to bear. Tanks slamming into the marine ball. Plus two vehicle weapons now done for Beyond. Those tanks hitting harder than ever. Another wave of marines fighting at the watchtower. Beyond caught in a tough spot, though. And the marines are annihilated as they try to turn the corner. Another shot from the high ground. Every shot killing a marine and a few nearby. A couple valleys, enough to take out a chunk. And like three or four tanks will wipe out every single marine as long as there's any cover. Here now has plus three weapons completed on those siege tanks. I feel like that's even more important than the marines right now. Here moving forward, a single siege tank. But there's two, three on the high ground. Has to be careful about straying too close. Beyond picks up. And he's heading for, well, he's going to try to find somewhere. I think he's, it, the, the situation is fluid, but drops out. Looking for an opportunity. We'll be able to stim forward and takes out the tank. Very important. Cure is still going towards the south side. He can't very well come back to deal with this. Deals with some of the medevacs, but the tanks aren't sieged. Beyond has the concave, but he doesn't have any medevacs with his army. They're now straying far behind. And that means Cure able to fight back as soon as his tank siege up. Now getting plating. It looks like, oh wait, the medevacs are still, well, one medevac is alive, but good luck with that. Beyond five bases. It feels like Cure has an advantage here just overall, just because he's been able to maintain on Beyond's side of the map, but he hasn't broken any of these bases. Here, though, pretty comfortable on his side. Beyond hasn't been able to make any sort of concerted effort. Uh, at least not yet. A triple drop for Cure. They, he recognizes there's no sensor tower for Beyond at all. They've been cleared out. He's rebuilding them, but uh, not quite in time. And a third... I think that sensor tower to the right side gives away the base entirely. But another snipe from Curry finds the command center and knocks it out of the sky. Well played. Be unloads up five medevacs. As opposed to just three to try to counter it. There's multiple command centers. They're both at 200 supply. 220 versus 250 marines dead. And it's just the beginning as neither player. Well, they're both one fight from defeat, but it's very unlikely they're going to be able to find a fight so decisive. Beyond just now getting building armor. No high sec auto tracking on the way, and he didn't have any missile turrets anyways. The drop line into the main. And at the same time, Beyond drops out, and he targets a planetary fortress! 
What have you done? And the Marines come down and slaughter them to a man. The Red Army is crushed. And Beyond is building three more barracks and 16 Marines at a time. 300 dead. That takes a bit of time to replace. Beyond builds one Liberator to clear up the siege tanks that were abandoned out in the center. Gets one, softens up another. Few Marines stem forward in response. Feels like Cure is slowly but surely carving out more of a position on the map. 11 tanks to 12. Beyond actually has plenty. The Marine Count battered down in that ill-fated... He right-clicked on a planetary. He had to be looking the other way. And was not even targeting the workers. Building armor is quite a thing. The only thing that can save a base from Marines. Ugh. Oh. The siege tanks rudely shelling the marines during their geology expedition. Liberator as well. Taking advantage of Cure trying to take out the marines. Push the tank in. Keeping it from getting away from the Liberator. Creating a, a tough situation here. As Cure, well, Beyond now taking the gold. Cure's already taken his. And we got ship weapons level 1 as, as Cure starts adding ravens into the composition the ultimate late game unit uh, great in the early game great in the late game mid game very hard to keep them alive but as the armies become more set the ravens are one of the best tools when well controlled all right there's some caveats at breaking tough position between the interference matrix and empty armor missile you're able to either disable the tanks or soften up the marines in order to potentially take a decisive fight. Now, of course, they are quite expensive to lose if you just fly into a bunch of Vikings and Marines and die. Not again, Beyond. Not again. He's decided he's gonna go for it, but gets Dorito dusted by the Ravens and now chased away. The minimap is a mess. He's actually fighting with anti-armor missile in effect here. There's a single siege tank. Two Ravens die. But the Vikings will be able to pick off several medevacs in the process. More Marines stim in. Stray into siege tank fire, but get a Viking. As the bloody exchanges continue. Liberator. More barracks on the way. Eleven racks this time. For both sides. Oh my. We've moved past the octo racks into double digit barracks. Oh my. Another command center with marines in front of it. It's going to land. It has building armor and Beyond has reinforcements. Cure. Unable to really leverage the ravens into a good position. In fact, uh, his reliance on keeping his army together is being exploited now by Beyond. Between the liberators and just the mobility of marines that are not tied to keeping ravens alive, Beyond is starting to make more progress and take bases on his side. They'll take it a tough engagement, fighting uphill. Not a huge deal, except for how many siege tanks are at the top of that hill. Doesn't quite have one in range for the watchtower. Beyond only now getting highs. He's building 21 marines. 22 marines at a time. God. How many can he lose at a time is the question. 355 versus 300 so far, and we're still not even close to a conclusion. They're both maxed out. They're both mining from as many bases as possible. Every base on the map has been taken. Another set of scans across the board. Sensor towers at the front as well. And a siege tank drop, as well as marines to the north. Shelling the planetary, supporting with marines. A scan. The turrets are actually, yeah, those ranged turrets are quite a difficult thing to deal with. But the tanks are blasting the planetary apart. The, the SCVs are pulled, though, and that's enough. Raven scrambles the entire tank line, whips out a couple auto turrets, drops them down. Medivac goes down and Cure defends both flanks, but Beyond goes straight up the middle. He chases down the Vikings, drops on top of the tanks, 
clears up the center tower and sets up a siege line. So Cure doesn't have any time to react. Cure loses 13 SCVs, which is probably a good thing for him at this stage of the game. And the Ravens will be given a little bit of time to respond. That, that's so many Ravens. Uh, he's got 11 Ravens right now. The tanks can't do anything about it. The Marines are trying to fight. And still an okay trade for Beyond. In fact, he's up 20 supply. But Cure was able to hold on to his bases. What are the losses? Beyond has lost 3,000 more minerals, but, but 400 less gas. Cure's lost eight Ravens, so... 400 Marines lost for Beyond. Oh my. He loses more Marines in a single game than the entire Bronze League builds in an entire season. The Marines continue marching, stimming the ones that aren't critically close to death from their addiction. Meanwhile, anti-armor missile. There's just a tank out on the field, and now it's time for Beyond to get caught. Do a bit of archaeology here on the rocks. Finally takes out that tank. Marines are splitting, but the tanks on either side kind of put them in an awkward position. How are these Marines still here? Another few dozen. Just pancaked by the siege tanks. Interference matrices, though, as Cure fights back. He's using those ravens to full effect. Scrambles a couple more tanks. Another anti-armor missile on the Marines. Cure trying to carve his way forward. He needs to keep almost every tank scrambled. The interference matrices and the auto turrets helping out. There's a tank on the high ground. And Beyond is losing a lot of the tanks on the field. In fact, he's down to just six. Uh, Cure only has five, but he has the Ravens with which to directly counter the siege tanks. Locking them down for a duration long enough for the Marines to crush through. But Beyond's Marine Cog, 22 Marines at a time, is still a lot to contend with. Cure is rebuilding a whole, a whole lot of everything. Beyond is building Marines and tanks, because that's how Beyond do. <sighs> Three more Ravens at a time. The bases are still mining, everyone. Everyone's base. Neither player has been able to successfully close the distance. Beyond has 11 orbital commands, as well as 11 barracks. So he's going to keep going right up until the minerals are completely gone. All right, Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. Oh, he lost three or four of them, and the rest are in autumn colors. He doesn't have enough scrambles here to really break the tank line. He might have enough Marines to do so, though. It's a bloody battle yet again, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, a relatively good trade for Cure. No, he's going to lose the orbital. Anti-armor missile comes through, the Dorito dust. Uh, softening up many of those Marines, but they will recover if given time to do so. That's more in doubt. Cure loses an actual base, but it's less the loss of the command center and more of the actual mining location, considering how many alternative bases they have to float on over. Meanwhile, the tanks continue shelling. The Marines continue dying, but Beyond is still nearly maxed out, even after losing five... I don't think I've ever seen a thousand Marines lost. It's barely possible to even build that. Well, including all the barracks and the bases and, you know, the other units. There are only so many minerals on the map. Those aren't Zerglings, all right? They're good units. They cost more and uh, rarely are lost in such numbers. But when facing themselves, the Terran Civil War, the fields run red with the red Marines. But the blue is joining in just fine. Another stim forward. Somehow Beyond was able to split off another 30 or so supply and takes out yet another orbital command. And this will bring Cure down to five, which is not quite critically low, but it's dangerous. All right. Cure, well, he's got the Raven Viking. I'm not going to call it a death ball, 
but he's certainly got a better army composition in a heads-up fight. It's just, Beyond is putting so many heads on the field that some are bound to roll into a decent position. Ship weapons and plating level 3. Cure is about to be fully upgraded across the board. Maximum upgrades. The Ven try a scan there. Both players just whipping the scans out, keeping track of things. And gets a Raven, looking for more. The Marines will turn around. The production tab is empty, mostly because they were at 200 supply for a surprisingly long amount of time. No, not through the watchtower. Okay, beyond. But still, more Marines. Anti-armor missile. Softens them up. Kira's army needs to stay together. You can't split up the Ravens. Not in any realistic fashion without risking them all dying on both fronts. Anti-armor missile, anti-schmarmer, schmarmalade. Anyways, I don't doesn't care. Goes for the planetary. Takes it out. But the Ravens are opening up the defenses. Knocking down multiple tanks. And the siege line progresses forward for Cure. Beyond. Marines and tanks in production. No indicator he's interested in any sort of Raven transition or anything like that. Carves out a few more tanks. And the command center goes down, but Beyond has more where that came from. The question is, how many minerals are left? The orbital commands in flight. Down goes another one. The Marines stim twice. They're within one shot range from the siege tanks, and that's before the empty armor missile. The medevacs aren't being given time. Beyond didn't go for Caduceus reactor on the fusion core. Another orbital command being uh, taken out by the Vikings. Those missiles doing so much damage and beyond. Down to just, okay, nine. Uh, I can, if I can count them on my fingers, that's a getting to the lower side of things. <laughs> oh, here we go. Splits and stims, but anti-armor missile, he targeted the back line and the Marines will stim forward and they will take down the tanks. But at what cost? Massive tank hit, another entire group an entire division of marines obliterated by the siege tanks beyond has taken the top right but he scans cure had the presence of mind to scan for it he needs to go deal with it now because beyond dropped an entire mineral line of mules and has tripled the mineral income the scv is fighting the tanks drawing the fire almost able to take it out but not quite enough another round of scrambles come through but actually, the, there's enough siege tanks for Beyond. This fight is not great for Cure. He's focusing in, in the top left corner, trying to take out the mules, which were able to mine a full duration on that orbital command. 20 SCVs down for Beyond, though. And just like that, neither side is able to replace their units. We've been fighting at 200 supply for so long. But now there's nothing left. Neither player has enough to make more than maybe a siege tank at a time. The mineral patches have run dry so quickly as the unsustainable mule mining has drained them. And now we have to take stock. Beyond with another drop towards the main. Able to cut off some of the reinforcements. Almost gets the Ravens. Multiple star ports here. Cure scrambling back. Beyond's last ditch effort might be enough to break the contain and potentially retake the map. He immediately drops half a dozen mules. Anti-armor missile. All those ravens are badly bruised, but they can be repaired while he still has the resources. And Beyond's Marines are getting cleaned up. Oh my God. 780. The single siege tank. Wow, that's hardcore. He leaves one marine. Like, go get him, Billy. You got this. And <laughs> I'm reminded of the siege tank battle at the watchtower to start this all off. Beyond trying to grab whatever minerals he has left, but he's out of options. The ravens have carried cure through, and Beyond didn't even attempt to challenge them. He tried to play around them. He tried to play through them, but Cure has held strong, and the People's Terran is closing in on victory. 
He has a 60 supply lead. He still has the Ravens beyond dangerous until he's completely out of options, though. If those Ravens die, and if he, he flies over, even flies too close to the Marines for even, like, two seconds, well, then this game can still turn. Here doesn't have much left over either. He's long distance mining. They both so incredibly efficiently exploited the map to its fullest extent and in barely 30 minutes are down to one base mining. Wow. Here drops a tank and we're back to individual tank micro after almost half an hour of full army movements. Beyond. Stims. He's going for it. Trying to get there before the anti-armor missile. He does so. But there's some auto turrets to buffer. He's able to take out the ravens. There's just too many marines from beyond though. And now the rest of the fleet has to come back. Beyond finds another opportunity. He's looking at the SCVs. There aren't too many left for either side, but the ravens are here. And the auto turrets will help. Maybe gets the orbital as well. Still killing so many SCVs, despite this scenario. Unsieged tanks, actually better than siege tanks in a straight up fight against each other, but they still have to close the distance. GG, he just taps it out. 106 to 55 supply. Kiro loses 599 Marines. Beyond 800. And 71 Marines. But Kier holds. And he drives back the Red Tide. By the slimmest of margins. If even one of those fights had gone a little better for Beyond. Well. It could have ended in disaster for Kier. But. That may be. The most marines, I, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that's the most marines I've ever seen die in a singular game. Probably ever, including Bronze League Heroes. Including most team games as well. <laughs> Beyond pushes it to the limit and cure. Holds. Is his greatest strength this is his greatest weakness. I mean, you're, you're once again showing enough flexibility to survive. Beyond showing his inflexible nature eventually cracks. Enough fancy, profound sounding statements. Game two is on site Delta. Though I don't know how we follow that up. Imagine having to play any more games after that. I don't... My favorite part was how abruptly they just ran out of resources. Like, at some point, like 30 minutes, they just don't have any more money. As soon as, once you're down to one mining base, you can no longer support that level of production. And that happens quite abruptly when you're dropping mules across the entire map. So it goes from being able to support 11 barracks, multiple factories, starports, to like one base economy. Ugh. <sighs> I haven't seen that many Marines die since my nightmare mode attempts on the Wings of Liberty campaign. I'm sorry, Marines. They're not around to complain. So let's try to remember what the early game looks like. It's mostly um, dancing around with Cyclones and Reapers and Hellions. We had a little bit of that on Elkione, but Beyond skipped over most of it to start with the Marine drops. Um, it never really stopped until he was forced to. I'm still recovering. But, let's see if Beyond... Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, yes. Well, this could get very awkward very quickly. Beyond has a Cyclone, 
in that me uh <laughs> what <laughs> the day <laughs> And they both turn around, walk 360 degrees, and walk away. Hmm, that's why they call it the Xbox 360, I see. Well, neither player wanting to risk. Be unrevealed there was a cyclone in there, which Kieran knows will beat his medevac. But Beyond can't know unless Kieran shows his hand that there's no Cyclone in Kira's meta, so he doesn't want to take the risk. Oh god, now here we go again. He's trying to outflank Beyon. He's waiting with his own medevac. Kira, Siege Tank, Viking. And, oh no! Here, oh my god, what a save. He gets away with the medevac and most of the units, despite beyond ambushing him. Now there's a raven on the field, it looks like we're gonna fight out in the center of everything. Does anybody have any? Vikings hit the deck. Scrambles one tank. Uh, the tanks moved down, and now there's no tanks in this fight. The Vikings, the medevac is almost dead. And Cure just gets slapped down. Let's, sorry. We gotta, we gotta see the whole breakdown here. There's so much little detail, and that's, usually TVT fights are very technical like this, and not sending meat to the grinder for 25 minutes st uh, straight. But Cure... Yeah, he sees the whole army. Drops down. But the scramble for Beyond... Target fires the center mass at the Marines, but he doesn't target the tanks, which means he's unable to take them out. I think Cure... really overestimated how helpful those Vikings would be on the ground. He made the snap call to go for the Viking drop, and it cost him. Beyond showing he could use ravens as well. Cure demonstrated how good they were in the previous game. And those interference matrices can absolutely turn a fight at any stage. Three SCVs. Cure not willing to let it go. And he doesn't have much of a follow-up to this. He knows if Beyond is allowed to get back onto the map. He just has more stuff, so his best opportunity is catching him before he gets there. Oh, what? Wow. Beyond. Exactly, like, one Viking missile passed, three Vikings killing it. And Beyond has three bases. Kira only has two. Kira's playing a fighting retreat right now. He's trying to catch Beyond somewhere out in the field. They both scan the center of the map. Neither of them see anything. <laughs> Which, uh... Is quite amusing. Cure is still on the very corner here. And if those tanks were sieged, it could be amazing. It actually gets one of the the uh, ravens. But his liberator is picked off. Beyond also now fighting some zone defense as they... Um, just, uh... So, alright, Viking. Recenter. Air control is everything. Air control, giving you that extra range or extra vision for the siege tanks, as well as potentially carving out space for the liberators. That is Cure's ticket to victory, and denying it is Beyond's uh, way of forcing a game number three. Cure in a tough position economically. He is building a third command center, but if Beyond is allowed to mine from his third for much longer, it's going to be an insurmountable lead. The Viking count. He's at 11 against 8. Has neither player bothering with medevacs now. Is that the Viking count is the most important thing. But anti-armor missile from beyond. Once again showing. He knows all about the Ravens. But he loses one immediately. Viking target fires good. Each of them knocking about with each valley. 
And somehow Kier ends up taking a better fight and turning the Viking lead around. That's enough for him to uh, feel comfortable to turn around or maybe anticipating this sort of attack as Bion somehow slips behind the lines and finds an opportunity. The tanks go the other direction, but the SCVs are being slaughtered. A single Liberator. 18 SCVs dead. The engineering base. He doesn't even have them done. Gonna target down some more. He's, he's just getting to the very back corner here, buying every possible second. 29 SCVs dead. No upgrades at all. Bion now just needs to close it out. Which is why I'm surprised he's out in the middle of the field here. Moments before his upgrade's complete. This is the only way things could go wrong for Bion. Is by losing a fight on the field. And not having enough production to turn it around. But he's playing zone defense again. Keeping Cure away. The scan to the north. He's thinking, what would Bion do? And Bion would be loading up like five medevacs and dropping the main. Um... Oh my god. Oh my god. And this is a disastrous position for Beyond. He's gonna lose all of his tanks. He manages. Well, it, because he has his Vikings walk. What? Be Beyond loses his position on the field because his Vikings are walking into the natural. And now you can fly. I don't. No. It's way, it's way more of a power move to walk away. I... Even despite the uh, strong fight on the field, Kier unable to follow it up. His reinforcements were cut off by the Vikings, which are now wandering back in. A very precarious position. Again, Bion has managed to lose the key parts of his army that he needs to really close this out. But I think the weight of his supply is just going to be too much. He has 1-1 one, one and combat shield against neither. So, just marine should work just fine here. Even without air control. He splits, he stims, he takes down the Vikings, eats a few losses. He's got a, a butcher's price to pay. But beyond, takes game number two. Though he doesn't make it particularly uh, decisive. I think Cure, when left to his devices, knows how to win the game. But Beyond knows how to make things interesting. Like, he always finds a way around the army. Even when he doesn't need to. He's still looking for those back steps. Why are you walking Vikings and Beyond? Explain this. All right. Well, then they walk in dramatically like that. Maybe we'll get a Netflix show. All right, one of the 47 Netflix shows that are about Vikings. How about that? All right, no, Vikings are more of a Top Gun sort of... Not important. Anyways, game three, which Cure's ill-fated early attack set us up for. Um, well, game three is on Golden Aura. Reaper comes across Kyrus to the north, Vion to the south. Command centers on either side. This is the most conservative opener for either side so far. As it is a map without a ramp to the natural, so that means uh, you have to have units to defend. Even if you get a bunker, Reapers, Medivacs. Bunkers are not the be all end all of defense. They're the front line at best and are vulnerable to things like Cyclones and Siege Tank bushes. So uh, not the most reliable of things. Here, three command centers now. Beyond, more focused on the aggression because of course. It's 
starport finishing up for Cure. He delayed uh, a lot of his tech here for uh, the third command center. So Beyond will have the initiative. He's got a cyclone and uh, whatever else he can jam in. A couple just four marines into the medevac. Here's production line. I'm quite literal here. Something to stall it out. Now, that single medevac can completely eviscerate the mineral line. If Cure didn't anticipate it absolutely perfectly with the Viking. He didn't need to have his starport quick enough to go across the map with the medevac. He just needed the Viking quick enough to deflect the medevac from beyond. And he anticipates it perfectly. That's the... He knows. Believe me, you. He knows the exact timing. That cyclone drop can come in. Beyond still finds an opportunity because, of course he does, but it's too good to be true. He doesn't bother dropping out because he doesn't want to end up... If he loses the medevac, then Cure, who now has three command centers, by the way, gets all the map control. If Beyond loses this medevac, especially if he loses with units inside, he has no way to keep Cure tied up in his base. He could just take his third. He's going to have a better economy. So the threat of the medevac right now is as good or better than getting a bit of damage done. Obviously, if he was able to kill 15 SCVs, it'd be great, but that's not going to happen. Interference Matrix, chosen by Kira this time. So far, Interference Matrix has been the key to the victory for both players. Beyond in Game 2, locking down just the right amount of units. And, of course, Game 1, Kira using it to great effect to wipe out dozens of siege tanks and dust uh, hundreds even of marines. I bet it hit hundreds of marines by the end of the game. Directly contributing to their annihilation. Devil Engineering Bay for Beyond. Has neither side, has there even been a unit lost? No. Beyond like misplaced a supply depot and canceled it. That's why he has 25 minerals lost. Six minutes in, still, well, it's one to one. Neither player wants to just lose. All right. No, I mean obviously. That if that's how StarCraft works, Winter. Neither player would like to lose. Tell me something I don't know. Did you know, um, the uh, the airspeed of an unladen swallow? All right. Because I don't. So that didn't really help in that scenario. But uh, also. Here. Oh, Beyond, where are you? Beyond. Is this intentional? Is he intentionally putting himself in a bad spot? He somehow didn't see this army. No, Beyond's going across the map. Cure? Oh, God. Here we go. Um. So now Cure's like, excuse me, where is your army? And... He's got the right idea. Beyond is headed for the natural. He's got some stim marines. There's a single tank on the high ground. Beyond hasn't dealt with it. He sees it. But the tank will get two big volleys in at least. But the tank's uh, uh, in a bit of an awkward position. A liberator in the main. SCVs being slaughtered. But Beyond will eventually... Well, he's doing so much here. Kira's taking heavy losses. Both in SCVs, the Liberator's still alive. But Beyond also loses his entire army. So... Looks like the Liberator got cleaned up. Cure now has five barracks online. Beyond just started barracks four and five. Cure's been mining from three bases. Even though he just lost a bunch of SCVs, his third base has landed. Whereas Beyond just got there. And some of these SCVs are idle for some reason. Here's up 20 supply. He's able to bounce back as he already had the infrastructure ready to do so. Are those Hellbats? <laughs> In TVT? All right. Well, here comes Gear. Looking to be the antidote to be on in this series. The Vikings knocking down whatever they can. Gets a medevac, gets a Viking. The discretionary chew toy depot here. Knocks out another Viking, but gonna lose at least one of his own. Beyond on the ropes, as Cure has demonstrated a superior tactical prowess throughout this series. 
but be honest ever, when cornered is most dangerous. Though he doesn't have any medifacts to load up and send for the main, he's still going to attempt. He's sending a Liberator out. Single Liberator picks off a tank. 18 SCV is dead, though. Cure already starting. The plus two infantry upgrades. Whereas Beyond doesn't quite have his armory done. He doesn't have combat shield, which makes those tanks even more deadly. Finishes now. 40 supply lead for the People's Terror. Liberator looking for something. Here, setting up a surround. Single Liberator, still a deadly option. Beyond. But in comes the army from the south side. Trying to get the damage done as well. We'll outflank the tanks. And Cure, with a beautiful surround, will knock Beyond out of the series. The People's Terran with a decisive and deserved victory in one of the most brutal Terran versus Terran. With 1,500 plus Marines lost in game one and plenty more throughout the rest, Cure demonstrates a superior knowledge of the matchup and Beyond's top tier micro and his willingness to take risks do not pay off. Not in time. So, quite a dramatic Terran versus Terran, and I hope it made, it made your day a little bit better. If you got the means and motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free uh, for now. Um, and if you haven't yet checked out the second channel, Winter Gaming, for uh, streams and more content, and it, you know, if you're content with this, that's fine though as well. Um, you can check it out in the description or just, you know, type it in. But thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Congratulations, Cure. Stay chill.